Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a warm welcome to you, and if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you uh, like and find the analysis that I provide useful every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Please press that like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm and gets it a bit more popular. And recommended. Anyways, let's get into the um, the trading economics and looking at the week ahead. And in the week ahead, we have. And let me just zoom in a bit. We've got the U.S. and China will be publishing inflation and foreign trade updates, and that's important. Um, inflation being. Um, I guess the uh, devaluation of money, whether you know inflation goes higher, it, de it's a, it's a, it devalues the currency, which kind of puts pressure on the Federal Reserve uh, to have to you know do a bit more tapering and potentially uh, push forward rate hikes, which is uh, which and rate hikes generally appreciate a currency. So let's see what happens there and uh, foreign trade updates in uh, the coming week. While central banks in Canada, Australia, uh, those are the two that we focus on anyway, will decide on monetary policy. Uh, they're expected to um, hold towards the end of the year. I think all central banks will end up end up holding uh, into uh, Christmas. They don't want to make uh, borrowing costs and loaning costs um, more expensive and really um, potentially damage the economy before it's actually got going. So other important data to follow include US consumer confidence, UK October GDP data, German investor morale and uh, factory orders, Japan current account and producer prices and um, again something about India's industrial output but a um, bit of market moving news but I think that the focus really is on um, the Omicron variant and I'm going to get into that when I get into the technicals which is next. So starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro the yen and the british pound and um so we use this as well i look at it anyway as a um as a measure like i said of dollar strength and uh, um use it as uh, i guess some confluence to understand um you know where really the best prices to potentially buy are right if i'm looking to buy the dollar so we saw uh, this week, or last week into this week, prices did come down again into this demand zone and, uh, you know, uh, bounced up from there. I think the dollar being a, a bit of a risk off currency anyway, and risk off is when there is a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt, which we do have with the uh, Omicron variant. Uh, the dollar um, does act as uh, one of the safe havens. The other one is the Japanese yen and the um, Swiss franc, right? And the euro is, you know, slowly becoming a... Um, a safe haven currency as well so uh but for now uh the dollar the yen and the uh, chf sorry about that chf uh, the swiss franc are generally the safe haven currencies so um just looking at i guess uh, the omicron variant and things are still up in the air and uh ing have a great um uh, uh, I guess article on the three scenarios surrounding the Omicron um, uh, ver um, variant and the global economy. So nobody knows if the new variant will be more transmissible or deal a significant blow to the current vaccines. These are the best and worst outcomes for the global economy. It's important because money tends to flow in and out of certain currencies and obviously certain asset classes based off of whether um, they the, the degree of risk, right? So you've got extreme risk off, which is um, extreme fear, uncertainty and doubt. So extreme risk off would be what we saw last year, 2020, when the world was locked down due to the introduction of the um, the, the COVID-19, right? Now, things, although are, are quite bad, uh, will never be as bad as that. Governments don't want to go into full lockdowns and we won't have the whole world going into a lockdown, right? So, um uh, ING Bank have um, have basically um, uh, given three scenarios: an optimistic scenario, a scenario a difficult but not a disaster, and a Omicron deal significant blow to the recovery. So, again, as I said, money tends to flow in and out of certain assets depending on uh, the risk sentiment. So, um, here we have an optimistic Omicron 
base case is for Omicron to be difficult, but not a disaster. So that's ING's base case. And then there is Omicron, a significant blow, meaning severe risk off, right? So then we have the Omicron assumptions, which are a faster spread in the optimistic uh, Omicron. We have Delta, say, um, we have no, basically Delta stays dormant. Um, uh, sorry, Delta stays uh, dominant or transmission advantage is minimal. Uh, the uh, vaccine less effective is no, the vaccines work well, especially against serious illness and more serious illness is no, My, uh, milder illness aids path to normality, less relevant if Delta is still dominant and the economic impact, which is always important. So what would the economic impact be or what do they see if we have an optimistic Omicron, which is a rec the, uh, the global recovery, I guess, continues and central banks continue to tighten and taper further into December. And forecast, they forecast the US and, and also the Eurozone to grow as well as the Eurozone, um, Euro dollar to actually fall. So the dollar to get stronger and the Euro to get weaker, right? And we go, go through the base case when it comes to the Omicron difficult, but not a disaster. And this is where the bank, I guess, see where um, uh, see things as they are now and potentially into the future. So um, from an economic impact perspective, not gonna go through each one of these, but the winter growth slow, central bank uh, banks pause uh, on their uh, tightening and taper, but 2022 tightening largely on track, which is what I would also um, have to agree with. And um, they still think that by the end of 2022, um, so in about a year's time, the euro dollar should probably stay around about the 110. So any pullbacks on that euro dollar when we get to it are uh, probably selling opportunities if the base case or even a better um, optimistic Omicron, you know, you still want to potentially look for any kind of short trades. And uh, the dollar um, is a buy. So um, one of the other um, interesting articles on ING currently is uh, the central bank forecast. So they've recently updated their uh, 2022 central bank forecast and European Central Bank, Federal Reserve Bank of England, Bank of Japan, uh, Bank of Canada, Australian Bank, and the Swiss National Bank. And um, ultimately we're looking for rate hikes or cuts. So I don't think anyone is cutting at the moment uh, due to high inflation. And we've got the QE balance sheet change as well, which is similar to a, um, a potential um, appreciation of a currency and what we're looking for at the end of the day is for the central banks that are looking to hike first yeah the ones that are looking to hike first and hike more as well as taper first and taper more are the ones that you want to really look to buy and the ones that are doing it least and last are the ones that you're looking to sell of course um the um there, there is risk sentiment that Will, is, is the driving factor in the short term, but in medium to long term, once the world discovers a vaccine for the variant and once we get ourselves back on our feet, because that's what we do as a, I guess, a human species, you know, this is basically what kicks in the fundamentals, right? So um, we've got the uh, Federal Reserve looking to taper um, starting at the end, I guess, uh, this, uh, this year and into next year and then we've got some rate hikes potentially third quarter of 2022 and the fourth quarter of 2022 all things being um you know working out as the bank uh, ing bank thinks whereas the european central bank um have peppp -P -P reduced which is a form of qe but app boosted and then they're looking to potentially um uh, high rates in first quarter of 2023 whereas you've got the federal reserve who are looking to high rates twice in 2022 so this should be where the money will ultimately flow um, over the next uh, year again if this all plans out so again any short trades any pullbacks on the euro dollar really should be looking for uh, short trades and for me anyway and that means uh, looking at the higher time frame and looking for lower time frame entries so higher time frame being a daily and then looking for supply and demand or supply zones on that daily time frame chart and then looking for sell trades right so looking at dollar index again it's just really looking for pullbacks uh, the dollar is benefiting from its risk off safe haven um, status um, as well as potentially uh, monetary policy right guidance so any pullbacks if you can get some as confluence 
that'd be even nice um, and then the, any kind of pull deeper pullback into that 95 area will be probably a bit more of a bargain if you know they are expecting prices to potentially be somewhere up here or the dollar index to be somewhere up here in the uh, in this uh, medium term maybe the next three to six months right so any pullbacks the trend is you know to the upside driven by of course fundamental analysis so um uh, for me, that's where my bias is. Again, anything can happen, and there are opportunities to get short if you're looking for a short trade. Um, and prices come up uh, to here, uh, to this 97 area, and you're looking at the euro dollar potentially a buy or any kind of dollar sell trades on any of the dollar crosses. Then um, that's what you're looking for is confluence. So moving on to the uh, dollar yen and uh, dollar yen. Prices have come down to this demand zone. They did bounce up a bit and they've held so far. So, um, so yeah, again, my bias is again to a buy from a buy dollar perspective. Uh, I'm not saying that prices are going to go up this week because if, uh, again, we're in a wait and see mode and if uh, the Omicron variant does get a bit worse, then you can expect, you know, the, the, the yen to, you know, to strengthen over the US dollar. But um, again, once the the the, um, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt you know uh, starts to dissipate, then this actually looks like an even better bargain to look for a buy trade. So my bias is to the upside. Not too sure what's going to happen this week, but um, again, as um, the uh, we start to figure out the 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 effect of the Omicron variant, again we uh, we start to look for buying or selling. Uh, um, uh, positions, but this week is going to be a bit of a wait and see uh, for me. Uh, well, so far anyway, until some new information comes out. Dollar Swiss, pretty much similar thing. Again, we've got um, bargain prices. Right, so price was a bargain at the beginning of November. Prices made higher highs. Obviously, some risk off sentiment. The Swiss franc does strengthen uh, more than the US dollar in a risk off environment, but that is a decent buy i would look to the left though and see that this level has been touched several times so for me i think um there is obviously a buying opportunity here but for the guys that are in the group there is a bit of a cpr around this area as well as a bit of a stop hunt towards these lows so um you may want to look for that rather than jumping in at um you know these uh, these areas here if you see a decent uh, a decent entry and some entry candles but again, if risk continues to go off, then you will have uh, the Swiss franc strengthening. You should have prices continue to go lower. And then any pullbacks into that area of supply, which would be here, that would be your selling opportunity. Looking towards the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, um, again, the dollar strengthening in a risk off environment against the Canadian dollar. Although the Canadian dollar, when we look at the uh, central bank, uh, Bank of Canada they're looking to high rates actually quite soon as well um, when it comes to uh, the timeline uh, they're looking to hike one two three four five well, pretty much every single it's like every quarter uh, for 2022 whether that happens or not but it's really buying the rumor right if that's the rumor that the bank is a uh, is expecting then um, really the bank the, the Canadian dollar should be a potential buy but in a risk off environment um, you're going to have you know this happened where the uh, the dollar is the uh, the dominant currency, and because the uh, uh, the Canadian dollar is a um, a commodity currency, and commodity currencies generally don't do well in a risk off environment. So if risk remains off, you're going to see what is happening right now. Um, but I do think these areas here could be actually really nice for a short. And again, just saying that this level has been touched several times. So in fact, if prices actually come up to this 130 round number, I do think that is a brilliant zone to look for any kind of short trades. But uh, let's see what happens um, in, the, in the coming weeks. But again, any buy trades you're looking at, just look for a, a pullback to a, a demand zone, any of these demand zones before looking at getting long if you want to continue buying the US dollar, pound dollar. So the pound again uh, in a in a, in a risk-off fight, you've got the money flowing into the U.S. dollar, and that's what you've seen pretty much this week. Uh, prices really coming down into this uh, this demand zone, and continues to trend downwards. We've got a bit of supply right here. So 
supply and then um, like I said I mean uh, from a risk off perspective you really want to look to buy the US dollar of course the um, the, uh, the 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 Bank of England are looking to also uh, uh, taper right so QE potentially ends in uh, this month and uh, potential hikes into into the first quarter of uh, 2022 but that's all things uh, being risk on so um, I think there is a bit of a turnaround for the pound coming um, I do think that um, if the data supports the narrative of course then I do think that the, the pound could be a potential buy in and around these areas um, I'm not necessarily looking at the uh, the pound uh, dollar pair but um, because you've got two currencies that are looking to where their central banks are looking to high rates, and the best trades to take are really divergent type trades where you've got one central bank looking to high rates and at least a central bank that's not looking to high rates anytime soon. So at least they're holding. And as I said, you really want to buy the currencies that are hiking first and short the currencies that are going to be hiking last. So for example, the Swiss National Bank are not looking to do anything with their currency. The the the, the the Bank of Japan and looking to do anything with their currency. So those are automatic sells for me in a risk on environment, but in a risk um, off environment, a bit more difficult. But from the pounds perspective, again, I probably want to, I don't think they're going to be hiking rates um, anytime soon, especially not this month into Christmas. But I do think at some point there may be a, um, uh, into next year, there may be a buying opportunity to, uh, to buy the, uh, the pound. And in fact, I'm going to probably delete that one. Yeah. And so uh, so I think there is an opportunity to buy the pound, but again, not against the uh, the dollar for me. I'm not looking at that currency pair. But again, if you want to look for any continued short trades, any pullbacks into that zone and then look for any kind of short trade there. Looking at the euro dollar and uh, we have uh, looked at the euro dollar and uh, we did get a pullback, of course. And then we've got, you know, some selling opportunities. I'm looking to get involved in this as a short trade. But um, there was some criteria that wasn't really met for me anyway. There was a trading opportunity, a, a bit of a capture pain relief zone on the intraday. But um, on the higher time frame, I'm really looking for a bit more of a stop hunt. Or if that doesn't work out, I think a, a, a higher move um, into that 114.50 area. And that uh, for me would be would represent a bit more of a bargain price. Because if this is a, uh, a bit of a high to a low, then you've got uh, in between that expensive and bargain area then you've got you know your fair value somewhere around here of course nobody knows it could actually start right here and if that's the case then in fact that 114 area is probably going to be a decent uh, fair value to look for their fair value price to look for any kind of short trade so um for now i'm not looking to uh to, to, to buy the, the, the well, I'm looking to buy the dollar, but I don't think the setup is just right technically for me to look for any kind of short trades just yet. I think um, better prices if we can, if we can get some, then that'd be brilliant. If not, if prices continue to fall, for example, if prices continue to go down, then that you know I'm just waiting for a pullback into a supply zone before looking at getting short. That's what you know my plan of action is. But uh, buying the euro at the moment, I think is. Uh, is is not really the one uh, uh, to uh, for me. It's not necessarily an option. I don't really want to buy the uh, the uh, euro, uh, not at all. So moving on to the next currency pair, which is the uh, Aussie dollar. Again, Aussie dollar, Australian dollar, suffering really from it being a commodity currency. Again, the uh, US dollar in a risk off environment in a straight fight is going to win. So you've got. This is the reason for you know this uh, the, the the sell off in this environment. Any pullbacks into that zone are going to be really nice uh, short trades. Again, going back to the ING uh, forecast, central bank forecast. Looking at the uh, federal, um, sorry, the Reserve Bank of Australia, they're not looking to hike potentially until, or well, the bank doesn't think they're going to hike until the first quarter of 2023. So again, they're lagging behind, right? The lagging, the lagging central banks are really the European Central Bank, the Australian Central Bank, as well as uh, the Bank of Japan and the Swiss National Bank. Whereas the the, the leading banks are the 
um, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, and the uh, Bank of Canada, right? So those are the banks that you want to look towards uh, potentially buying, or I'm looking towards buying again, not financial advice. Um, but again, just waiting for more risk on sentiment to come into the market. Um, but if risk on does does come into the market, then I do think um, it probably is going to be a bit of a pullback. But I still think that the dollar should potentially be. A, uh, a still be a buy against the Australian dollar. Um, so that's pretty much where we are. If you are looking to buy the um, Australian dollar for whatever reason, then um, technically I think this area is 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 okay, um, but uh, not not fantastic as it's not the freshest level of demand. And then finally, moving on to gold. Gold has been a bit surprising because you know, given the risk of sentiment, you would assume that gold would have you know gone. Uh, a bit higher from here but obviously during the week um, uh, it hasn't right again it's, it's typical uh, we, we understand what typically happens but um, over the medium to long term but price in the short term you know over the next you know, over the week or the month can be pretty uh, uncertain and a bit random but you would expect with the uncertainty that price should you know continue to go higher but if the dollar is also going higher that could um, you know, put a spanner in the, uh, the the gold in gold's work, but I don't think with higher with higher inflation, you know, going on with a lot of um, omicron uncertainty. In fact, I think you know what the market is actually doing is looking to buy gold for um, a lot cheaper than they would want to buy here, right? So um, the the banks and the financial institutions don't buy in the way that you know uh, retail traders buy, in the sense that they're uh, they're looking to you know. Um, they're looking to scale in over a period of time, you know, via iceberg orders. They're not looking to just take one trade, you know, or 10 trades this week um, and place a tight stop loss. They're looking to, they've got massive orders to fill. So if they've got massive orders to fill, right, and there's not enough liquidity for them to fill, then they will look for the best prices over, you know, maybe a week, a couple of weeks to a couple of months before maybe turning price to the upside. So let's see what happens with that. But if you do want to get short on gold for whatever reason, there is a supply zone between that 18, uh, 15 and 17.88. So I'll probably say the top of this supply zone, which does have actually a, a, some confluence of um, you've got a bit of resistance there, level of past support and resistance, which is actually just um, supply and demand zones, past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future. But um, you've got some confluence there. So technically, uh, a really nice zone for a short. But overall, if I was looking for a bias, I would probably say gold should be uh, a buy at the moment. So uh, regardless of what happens in the short term. Anyways, guys, that is it for this week. Um, I hope you all stay safe and uh, take care. And until the next week's video, I wish you all the best.